Welcome back to the channel everyone, hope you guys are all doing well. Today we'll be talking about the Frontier Casino and casinos that were located in Las Vegas from the years of 1942 up until 1998 with three different properties wearing the Frontier name. First, we'll begin with the first one which was the Last Frontier or Hotel Last Frontier which was the second casino on the Las Vegas Strip. It opened in 1942 on Highway 91, which would later turn into Las Vegas Boulevard. Similar to the El Rancho Vegas, the Last Frontier had a theme going on with the property, as many early casinos did when they opened on the Strip in the early days of Vegas. The Last Frontier was built on five acres on the side of Highway 91, prior home to the Paradise Club. The land included the 91 Club, a nightclub and restaurant owned since 1939, by Guy McAfee, who was a former Los Angeles police officer. The owners were R.E. Griffith and his nephew William J. Moore. To furnish the inside, they bought high quality furniture and imported authentic Western Pioneer saddles, antique guns, and other accessories for the hotel's lobby, bar, and restaurant. Along with the inside being very well furnished, they built a village right next door, which was called the Last Frontier village which was decorated with 900 tons of old west memorabilia you were able to find shops as well as an old western post office general store a mock jail a museum with pieces of the valley's growth and indian roots this was all very well seen by tourists coming to visit vegas for the first time and made the last frontier a very popular place for them to visit Alongside the village was the famous Silver Slipper Casino, which featured the slipper rotating in midair. Moving into the 50s, the last frontier would begin for phase two of the frontier legacy. The new frontier was built on the northern part of the property, and the original resort was on the southern end, which was still being used for a while. The property got a modern facelift and started to phase away from the theme aspect of the casino. Outside, a new modern sign was built as well, which was similar to other resorts on the Strip featuring large stacked inverted cones which were lit at night. Inside the resort, the theater restaurant was named the Venus Room, which was very famous. If you're a fan of Elvis, then you would know that the new frontier was the place that Elvis had his first ever Vegas appearance in 1956. Judy Garland and Liberace also started their careers at the Frontier Properties. Although Elvis' first performance went well and the audience enjoyed it, it didn't last too long. The Las Vegas Sun wrote, For the teenagers, the long, tall Memphis lad is a whiz. For the average Vegas spender or showgoer, a bore. His musical sound with a combo of three is uncouth, matching to a great extent the lyric content of his nonsensical songs, I don't think the people there were ready for Elvis. He was mostly for teenagers and kids. Moving into the 60s would mean the end of the Hotel Last Frontier and Last Frontier Village. The new frontier expanded its hotel to include a seven-story hotel building where the Last Frontier originally stood. Many other additions were made as well, which included tennis courts, a putting green, coffee and steakhouses, an Olympic-sized pool, and additional parking. The sign would also get an update and would stand at 190 feet tall. A rotating F would get added to the top and a smaller lower marquee to the bottom. In 1967, Howard Hughes would buy the property and dropped the new from the name to just the frontier. Hughes would add a second hotel tower which now formed a horseshoe around the pool and tennis courts. He also added the first computerized room reservation system in Las Vegas to the frontier. There's also a rumor that in Suite 106, which was Hughes' former suite, there was a hidden tunnel that led to the Desert Inn. Into the 70s, a live album by Diana Ross and the Supremes was recorded over the course of the group's final engagement together at the frontier. The show marked Diana Ross's final performance with Supremes Mary Wilson and Cindy Burton. In 1982, Siegfried and Roy would find the Frontier as their new home after doing very well at the Stardust. They would perform there until 1988. 
1990, the Frontier underwent another remodel, which enclosed most of the balconies on the two hotel towers and added a 16-floor atrium tower, where the pool and tennis courts once stood. In 1991, Margaret Alardi bought the Frontier, but ran into trouble with the Culinary Workers Union and caused one of the largest continuous strikes in history. Once the strike ended, Phil Ruffin would buy the Frontier in 1997 and change the name back to the New Frontier. Many new restaurants, venues, and convention rooms were added, as well as the very famous Gillies, which was a country western bar with a mechanical bull and mud wrestling. In 2007, the property was purchased by a large corporation, and plans were made to close and demolish the casino for a new one to be built. On November 13th of 2007, the new Frontier Hotel's atrium tower was imploded and the history of the Frontier Casino in Las Vegas would come to an end. Although there were three different frontiers in Vegas, they were a big part of Vegas' history. Starting with the second resort on the Strip and making it into the 2000s with a modern style that we see nowadays is pretty impressive, as well as helping begin the careers for some of the world's best known performers. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while since I did a history video, but they are coming back. If you did enjoy this video, it would mean a lot if you liked the video. If you know something I missed, please put it down in the comments below, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.